now we've got July 29 design sprint. The goal for this one today is to finish off the Lyman filament extruder. Last week we worked on a brick press as well as the as well as the extruder part of the filament maker. Today we're going to cover uh, any finishing that has to happen on the filament maker, the extruder part, as well as the winder part. We're going to graph it, a court, um, map it, or study it, document it to the point we're ready to build. So we're, because we're pretty much ready to build, and if we had any extra energy or you know like how do we do a workshop right now? We're pretty much stacked with workshops till August 25th. It would be nice to do this extruder as a workshop. However, I can't, I don't have the energy to do that by the 25th of August when our big CB press build comes up. So I just posted that if you go to the uh, Facebook pages or opensourceecology.org workshops page, you can see the next CB press build, which is exciting. I mean, building yet the next iteration with uh, some improvements where the machine is going to the University of Utah where they have a design program for low-income housing typically they work on Native American reservations and provide low-income housing but they they like CEB so they they bought our machine and that's great so we, we continue doing that and the goal there being that um, just like we're making the 3d printer workshop right now replicable so the next next workshop being the August 12th and we're actually looking at next one end of September actually with a manual in in Maine because he's got a number of people there it's like two hours from Boston um, but hopefully we we just get a regular schedule going that's I mean that's the whole whole deal right now and Jose that's where the website comes in we got to get that going we got to work on on that getting the the remote signups so we we definitely want to do that as part of the marketing because I think right now the the biggest issue there is is marketing uh, we have six people signed up so far. That's at the two at the halfway point. That's not a lot. That's so that's actually kind of makes me think. Yeah, we definitely want to want to work out the marketing aspects. And it's typically that the it's a linear progress of people signing up. So people will be will be signing up right up to the last day. So according to the present trend, there's going to be at least 12 people at the workshop. But I would like to have 24 because I ordered materials for 24 and if we don't use them up we're gonna use them up in the next workshop so uh, but definitely trying to see okay uh, if we go to different locations definitely there could be much much more improvement but otherwise actively reaching out to to schools get teachers to to build 3d printers or something like that just like the organization called 3d for edu uh, out of a Michigan State there etc okay on the filament maker uh, I'm gonna keep my eyes out for anybody who can pretty much lead the the development of that workshop because I really can't definitely until August 25th because I'm I'm working on a CNC torch table which is a much that's a much bigger priority here and uh, but if anyone wants to rise to working with me on organizing that creating an event announcement actually the big part is going to be just sourcing all the parts and and doing uh, you know just kind of assessing that everything goes together well and possibly doing some of the assembly before the workshop but not too much just as long as we have all the parts and we're, we're pretty confident that you know maybe do some initial tests of all the critical components but for the workshop itself uh, it could be an experimental workshop where we don't charge people a lot of money, maybe like 50 bucks or something to, to come and participate in a day and we can make a whole day out of that where we build the, the extruder, show the printers at work, etc. So we can make a make a pretty interesting workshop and uh, I don't know of anyone else who's, I mean, any really working open source extruders outside of this one and this one that we're working on, I mean... I mean, it certainly doesn't have viral replication. Not everyone's doing this. I mean, I haven't really heard of many people. I don't know about any of you if you've ever researched it, but I haven't heard of many people actually using the Lyman filament extruder outside of, of the, Mr. Lyman, who's, of course, very successful at it you know, because he developed it. But the question is, I mean, how easy is it to replicate and make work and very reliably? Because that's, I mean, that's going to be the challenge that we're going to have to work out. So let's go to the the working document. So anyone, anyway, summary on that is anyone if anyone wants to step up 
to helping coordinate the film and maker workshop uh, please let me know and anyone who's watching that please do so as well but it will take it will take some time to do that so let's go to the the working docs we've got the Lyman filament extruder to see where we're at and and my first question is can anyone fill me in on whether the procedure for today is clear so I, I sent out an email and procedure uh, can somebody volunteer to try to explain it in their words so we, the, the first thing is that we all get on the same page on, on the task that's at hand Anybody? Well, if nobody wants to pipe up, I'm going to continue here. So this is the design sprint preparation. It's We're on the Lyman filament winder page. Okay. And I did a little video, to, a little preparatory video on that. Hopefully you, you've all seen it. So let's go into the actual design sprint document. Uh, noon to four today. So, and actually, I'm uh, the internet guy's coming down today. So I actually need to check out. Uh, just basically leave for a little, maybe 15 minutes at 2 p.m. to get them going, because we're getting some faster internet here. We only have four mega meg of a line. Um, winder finishing here. So, so the basic idea is getting. I mean, since we only have five of us right now. Uh, so we, what we want to do is we want to divide up the work, what's what's happening today. So the main point is if we go to the Lyman filament, filament Winder page, there's the master index, and the critical parts are so. So the master index essentially has uh, today's not July 20. That's the July 29. Let's correct that. And I think you guys can also uh, make sure make sure you guys can edit this document. Please go into this document. Uh, let me paste that right in. There's the there's the winder finishing document, and then Lyman filament winder the page wiki page is there. Um, the wiki page contains the master index. And it contains the intro video, and it contains the working doc. So we start with the Lyman Filament Winder Master Assembly. That's the CAD file. So please download that as well. Uh, it's it's right there on the wiki page. Okay, so let's just quickly go over this. the The main point of today. So we've got the filament winder, which is what I did is I copied some of the critical parts from the the winder from the last working document so we have it all right here but step number one is gonna be to to take all of these 3d these are STLs that exist for the winder we wanna redraw them first of all reverse engineer them into into workable uh, design files so they're, they're not STLs within FreeCAD uh, I just uh, downloaded the master assembly what's in a master assembly there's there's very little there I just uploaded that as a starting point so that's loading up here but the idea is we generate these parts uh, and I'd say we just start with the on page three with the all the all the parts that are the 3D printed ones, which are in in uh, lines 25 through 36. Now, please go to the actual spreadsheet. So, uh, the actual spreadsheet. Uh, let, let me give you a link to that here. The actual spreadsheet is uh, this master index right here. If you see that, there's 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 a bunch of uh, I broke down the spaces. Uh, to, to get individual people signed up to different parts. So let's do that right now. So uh, here's the link to that directly. So go into the link to the master index. Link to master index. 
So that's the master index. And right now, let's just go right into that and divide up the parts that are uh, there. So what we want to go into is into the, the items. Look at the, the part number 25 through 36. So essentially we're, we're working right here. Um, let's put that in red. That's where we're working, right? But we have to identify the parts, okay? And the critical column is the one in red, which is the actual simplified CAD file link. So what we want to do is assign people to that. Um, so assignment, let's put the assignment in column L where we have uh, people fill in uh, their names to to whatever part there is. So we have to identify the part and we have to identify who does it. So given that we have two, four, six, seven people, uh, four, five, six, seven people, let's put seven people's names and just, just get started immediately. So the workflow, one more time, is if we go to the first page, that's, that's, uh, that's the procedure basics. So the, there's the link to the wiki page, just to go over what we're the the workflow, create CAD for every part in a master index. So we're starting with the 3D printed files. Uh, name your file Lyman filament winder, whatever that is, and then upload to your work log. Once you do that, then you download the latest master CAD file, which is on the filament winder page. It's right here, Lyman filament winder CAD, and insert your part into the into the master CAD file. What's this exciting master CAD file look like? It's only this. Uh, now, does this even belong in a Lyman filament winder? Is there a power supply in the in the Lyman filament winder? Because what I said is simply, okay, I'm gonna just take one part by one part, start with the first part, and just put it into the master CAD, and other people just input their other parts and and arrange them in a way that's that's reasonable. So, in a master index. Yes, we do have a, a power supply, a 12 volt, 5 amp power supply. So the, I, I started basically with part number one of the entire assembly. Um, so we could add to it. It's just a placeholder. But because that's all we have in the master CAD file, that's our master CAD file so far. Unless we also have already a master CAD file. Roberto, do we have any mas other master CAD file for the whole whole design yet? No. No. Okay. So, so we can use this one. This one that we have, uh, that have just started. Say it again. Oh no, I'm Did not you sharing share my screen. Your screen. Yes, please. Okay. Right. So. Um, yeah. Here it is. So here's the, here's the power supply, and I and this is the what the master cat file for the filament winder looks like. It's just got the power supply in it so far. So the next person that generates a cat file. Just use this, use this file, and just start putting the other parts in there. And we should have like the XYZ axis, like right now the XYZ, uh, Z is, yeah, this is, right now we're looking like you see in the corner here, the XYZ orientation, that's good. We should start like that. Uh, so we're looking at the whole machine from the front. So look at, if you look at the little XYZ marker here, um, so just when we when we do this, we orient everything uh, this way here, as you see the axis x, y, and z. So vertical is going up, x is going to the right, and y is going uh, into the page here. But basically, we can start throwing the files in here. And actually, this is this looks like it's upside down, so we would want to rotate it. And what I can do is I can rotate because uh, I'd like that. If we're all working on the same file and you have completed your file and you want to put it in there, let's make sure the orientation is good. And right now it's kind of hard to orient, but just look at the XYZ marker uh, in the lower right of the FreeCAD file and just make it such that if you're looking forward, it's like a standard XYZ axis system, meaning Z is up, X is to the right, and Y is into the page. So uh, I'll, I'll rotate this around and upload it so that. Uh, we have the the correct version of that uh, but for now so let's go into uh, 
just just to go through the procedure here. So, so we're at <clears throat> still at page number one here. So you're downloading the MasterCAD file, inserting your part that you have just drawn or generated, and each part generated should take like 15, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Then we finish the complete MasterCAD, and then we start working on a visual bill of materials with all part links just like on last week's document. Um, so if you go to Lyman Filament Extruder, just for reference, we did this master visual BOM index. So we took this was our final assembly. And then in our working document, we had the final assembly labeled with hyperlinked parts to every single part. And we did that. Uh, it's found in the uh, Lyman filament extruder. In, um, I just want to show you the final product that we did. There. This, we want to get the equivalent of this four hours from now. That means hyperlinks to all the, all the sourcing, like you link on that and you can actually go to the actual buying of the part. You can buy your, your auger bit right there through that link and so forth. Okay, so the first thing is to, is to allocate work to different people. So I suggest we go right into the, since we're in a working document, uh, the, the critical parts that we're working with is we've got our working document as well as the, the actual spreadsheet. So we can go to the spreadsheet and put our names in there for which part we get, but we have to identify who, who gets what part. So let's, um, we've got the spreadsheet and we want to put people's names down to which part we're going to do here. So what are the parts? Well, we have to identify them. So let's label them um, in order to match our index here, 25 through 36. Okay. What we can do is uh, label parts 25 through 36 within the working document here. Okay. So let's, let's start it. We've got, so these are 3D printed files. Uh, the, the green ones are 3D printed. So let's start that. We put text 25 Okay, help me out here. So, so uh, start putting numbers 25 through 36. Um, so do that. And then more people, other people, go to page 9. Okay. Uh, so 7... I'm yeah. sorry, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. it's related with, with the name of the file. Yeah. The name of the file has a number. Yeah. But this number, this number, I, it's not, it's, it doesn't have a relation with the master index. That's correct. That's because we're working from a, from somebody else's design. This is Mr. Lyman. He did that, and he just has his own files. And basically, he couldn't provide the files to us. We have still haven't seen any, any files, uh, from him. So he's just got his own numbering. We're just starting from scratch. And uh, because we've got our master index like we have here, so yeah. yeah. Because for example, for part 25 through 36, I mean, he he just clumped everything into into one. He just put it as he labeled it as 25. So we're just trying to disambiguate it. We're just trying to uh, do whatever we can just to make each part give it a certain number. So does that make sense? Can we do that? Yeah, uh, when, when, when you said, when you said um, a CAD file, you refer to uh, the 3D model, yeah, the, the FreeCAD model? Yeah, yeah, we have to generate, we have, we what we need to do is download the, the parts from the part library, which are on another page. Yeah, this is kind of tricky here, because the part library um 
is where you're gonna find the original parts which show some of the dimensions and we have to basically reverse engineer them, turn them into FreeCAD files from the SDLs that exist to FreeCAD files. Yeah. So Lyman Film and Extruder Part Library. Go to that and, and on that page, so I maybe I need to the part library link is right here. So I'm gonna put that link into on the first page here. Uh, wh where we say create CAD pile for every mass part of the master index. Well, for that, use the part library as a starting point for measurements. So all you need to do is do a representative part. So part library here will be uh, that's the part library. So all those parts are in there. So identify that part and download it as an SDL, put it into FreeCAD, but then just draw that, redraw that so it's a native file in FreeCAD so we can actually work with it within uh, within FreeCAD because you can't work with SDL files well. So does that make sense? Yeah, but uh, the, the, the result of this work is generate a 2D file, like a CAD file, or like, like a 3D model. 3D model. Three yeah. Okay. Okay, step one is we generate each file for each one, yeah. each one part, like 25, part. like 26. Uh, yeah, let's make those numbers really prominent there. Um, like 27. Yeah, so do that and do that for on this page here. Let's see. Uh, can someone do uh, page 9? So we'll go into page 9. So we got 25, 26, 27, 28. How can I know the name of the part? Right. So we have to go. The only place that would be in a, ma in a, in a master part library, um, you can, well, let's see what the, yeah. the library says. So we've got all these names in the... I think in the part library there's 13. I think there's only 13 printed parts. Do we have those the, for the spooler? Here. Here it is. Oh, yeah. It's, there I've it is. Separated it into the tension mechanism. Okay. So there's the spooler mechanism and then the tension mechanism. So there you go. Right, right there. So, so, you know, STL1, so LF... W underscore spool disk or oh wait so there's an wait we already have FreeCAD files what's going on here so we already do um, for some of uh, maybe we do have them for all of the parts who um, did it that looks like um, it looks like one of them might be missing a FreeCAD part who's our 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 Oh, it's I.O. He secretly did that? In the background. Okay, okay. So, oh, there we go. Well, look at that. So that looks like a spool disk. And, for example, and a, and the size of that file is 30K. That's, that's quite good. I mean, he's got quite a bit of detail in there, like, you know, all these little notches. Um, so that's a very pretty detailed file. And... Um, that's great. So he already did that. Yeah. Well, excellent. Okay, so so let's go back to our procedure and, and reevaluate from there. But basically what we are saying is that we already have a bunch of these. So the next step, if we already have them, then go into the this uh, index and paste those links in there. So that's step number one. Paste the links into the into the column M and then we can start assembling them into the final uh, final product so which ones are missing let's see so okay so let's mm -hmm. let's now coordinate uh, in column B we got to get all the parts in there uh, so please um, 
Yeah, okay, so people are, are pasting them in. Great. So for example, spool disk. Okay, so I'm seeing a uh, spool disk. I'm gonna cut out of here. I'm gonna cut out of here. Okay, there you go. Okay, keep going. So maybe um, person, another group can work from the bottom, from 36, and um, and then on page nine. Oh wait, if that's if that's the case then 25 being the spool disk, we have to copy that. So we've got this right here, 25 spool disk. <clears throat> and there's two of the spool disks. So we can call that so let's see, let's look at the so we go between the, the master index. Okay, spool cylinder is 26, so we go 26 is this here. Spool holder bracket is 27. I guess that's this one. Spool holder bracket. Um, then we've got 25, this little, those little parts here, so uh, those little pegs and things. Okay, so. Tension wire guide, which part is that? Uh, yeah, so I'm going, I'm just putting them in the same order that these STL files for the spooler were numbered. They were a lot better okay. organized than for the extruder. Okay. So I'm just going in the same order so that it's semi congruent with the okay. whole document. When you say in the same order, same order as in the uh, part library page? Yeah, if you look at the STL files, like, um, so STL1 is spool disk. Yeah, STL2 exactly. Is spool cylinder, and then 3 is spool holder, and then it goes to some parts for the tension mechanism, but I'm just okay. putting them in the same order that they're numbered. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's, as long as we get all the parts, and then we can reconcile that. Good. So, continuing here. So, standoff. Let's see if I can identify the standoff. Spool holder bracket. Okay, let's. I'm going to go by this tension wire guide. Hmm, which is that? I'm trying to identify, so what's the tension wire guide? Um, okay, let's see, what, what I want to do is I'm going to add names to these as we go along, or column L, can you guys put your name in as far as, but what's the task? If we've got the file, are any of them missing? Maybe not. So, well, if that's the case, we're pretty do much done with the 3D printed parts. So what I suggest is we just go, okay, if those are all there, great. I mean, we've got the whole column M to fill. We just did like 12 parts. Great. So now let's go back up to the top and let's go to, so if you look at my screen, look at here. Um, 
So I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to put them in green. Uh, fresh, hot off the press. Okay, so let's now go to number eight here. So I'm going back to here. And since we're already done with uh, 25 through 36, uh, I want to see names go down on here. We've got seven people. I want to see. Yeah. Uh, put your names in there. And generate that part. So that means you look at it. What is it? Or maybe. Is that okay? Or is that too complicated? Two, four, six. Two, four, six people. Outside of myself. Um. Two parts for most of us, one for someone. Right? Yeah. Okay, so people uh, do. Um, let's see, let's maybe start with the tension wire connectors, cord clamp, washers, switches, relay. Well, every one of them has to get drawn up. The electrical wire is a little tricky. All right. Uh, maybe, maybe skip the electrical wire. That, that will do. I'm going to de-highlight that. Um, that's a little tricky because we have to know where the parts are first. Wire connectors. Maybe skip that one because... Cord clamp. Washers, washers. Um, gear motor. Gear motor is there, so fine. So these ones I can paste with green, brass heat insert, that's green. Okay, so these ones here we don't have to do, we'll wait for that later. The red ones, don't worry about it, but the green ones, let's do it. Okay, so M4 screws, okay, th those are specific things. So let's get all these screws, lock nuts, gear motor, bearings. Say it again. Are you sharing your screen? Uh, I think so. Can you can't see it? Let's see. Yeah, I, I am, I am see, uh, sharing it, so it might be internet on your side then. But we're moving right along here. So, okay, so next step is people, uh, put your name on here. I'm going to start putting people's names in. Um, let's get Jose, you got the two on top. Um, washers are, well, maybe um, M3 switch, cord clamp washers and bolts let's let's align a person another person so let's see let's get uh, would this work I mean, we just got to get those individual files, so as soon as we got them. That's it. And the solvent cement, rubber bands, MDF board, all the cement we don't need. Because that's, can't really see it. Rubber bands. Yeah, we could do a placeholder for a rubber band. Uh, some. That's a hard one. Oh, not necessarily after we I think we ran out of people already three four five six we run out of people one two three four five six we ran out of people so rubber bands uh, next person so we've got three three more items so maybe maybe Roberto here um, 
Will. What's TTT? What is that? I don't know what that is. Uh, unless we know what that is. That's blanked out. Um, okay, since these washers are pretty easy here, I'm going to put Jose on mo more of those. Because that's M3 washer, SHCS, M3 washer, M4 washer. Yeah, those are, you can pull those readily probably from a place like Master Car or anywhere. I mean, those are very simple. Can you guys do that? I put names of people into all those. As soon as you've got your uploaded to the wiki, then you have the simplified CAD file link that now the next team can start uh, composing into the final file. So uh, why don't I start doing that? So since I started the master assembly, I'm going to continue on that. And because we have all the SDL parts, I'm going to start putting them into the spooler and, and winder. So while you guys, uh, what we should do is actually do two files, one for the spooler, spool, the, the, the roll, and one for the, those, the other tensioner mechanism. So we should have two files actually, because that's going to be easier to divide that, because um, that lends itself to uh, better speed. In fact, we should do assemblies like uh, break down the master CAD file into, into smaller assemblies as well. I'll do that. I'll set those up. Because as soon as the parts are ready for you guys, that should take like a half hour or something, uh, then we can start assembling the individual assemblies and then put them into the final big assembly. So I'm going to start the placeholders for all the uh, assemblies. And keep looking at the um, extruder part library. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, don't don't neglect the part library the part that you're working on may be already in there i see some pulleys washers yeah a lot of that is in there so yeah i'm seeing it it's it's in there so like if you look at my screen those those screws are in there so all you need to do is paste them if that's that's what you need to do uh so don't redo it make sure you look at the part library first Okay, and I'm going to start the placeholders for the assemblies.
Okay, Mersin. I yep. don't allow. I don't allow the fire. I take it. Uh, what? I I'm seeing a, a, a fusion, a fusion of the three D object. It's only a fusion. No, no edit table. Uh huh. Which one? Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, but which one? Uh, is uh, M four is M M four S H C S uh -huh. 65 millimeters. It's not editable. Uh, that's all right. I mean, it's not editable. It's a fusion, and I I need to redraw this file. What's the memory on it? Three model edit table. Oh, uh, how much memory does it have? Is it a small file? It's a small file, yeah. How much? Yes. What's the size? Um, let me let me see. This part, it's like. Uh, Uh, 40. 40? 14. 14 kilobytes. 14? 14. Does it have the threads on it? Excuse me? Does it have threads? Can is, you repeat? Is that a screw with threads? Sh can you share your screen? Uh, no, are you sharing your screen? How can I do that? There's a button called screen share on the upper left hand side of the window. Okay, yeah. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, no, that's that's all right. I mean, just just leave it. That's fine. It's okay. a small file. I mean, right now, the main object is to get get the entire assembly all together. So, keep moving on. Upload it or okay. or link it to the table. That's good. I, I need to to uh, repl replace this for this. I don't. I don't make nothing. No, it's if that's already there. Just leave it. Just link it to the table. To the spreadsheet, so we have all the spreadsheet parts in one place. Uh, the spreadsheet contains everything, so just link this file to the spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that'll be the winder assembly. Yeah, so as soon as you have anything, replace your name with the link. That's a good way to keep track here. I'm trying. I, I like to squeeze the tables down so I can see it on a page very easily, like because I'm recording the video. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. Let's let's move on. Let's see if we can organize everybody now for the next phase. So what I'm seeing here is that is in a in a master index the the spooler uh, spooler or winder winder mechanism master part index uh, I'm seeing just about everybody did that but Jose you also have that 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 um, non freecad file just the the step right or something like that so but if not just don't worry about it for now just just put like a very simple you know block or whatever just just a placeholder okay so uh, this one here that's got a blank here that's just the only one that I'm seeing otherwise than this one Roberto here 
uh, but otherwise everything looks complete so the next phase is if you look at my screen here and slides number seven eight and nine and ten they show the sub assemblies now and on the wiki page I've differentiated all the sub assemblies uh, from SA1 through SA7 and named them so SA1 starting with so this is what we have here sub assembly 1 is the is the actual roll the spool sub assembly 2 is the holder for the spool uh, the, that's the side with the motor on it and then there's another part on the other side which is the side with just the other side so these can be broken down into three very distinct units then we can break this down which is the the rollers into two more units which are the motor side with uh, the bracket for the holding the motor and then the motor would have its own wires at the end so things like that and then this complicated part here that's got quite a bit of parts it's got like four four bearings some of these rollers and it's got bearings bolts so a lot of parts in there that's five that's a more complicated one that's for the advanced team members seven that's also pretty complicated too to well i mean not depending how you look at it but but the power supply and all the other electronics so placeholders for those including what would be nice there is the wire just placeholders for the wire connectors and then the last one subassembly six is the is the limit switch is basically where the wire where the filament goes in between two limit switches to turn on the spooler on and off but that's that's seven subassemblies total so we've got six people so can we divide uh, divide that up so can we do that uh, what I'll do is master part index I think we can since we're working in this I don't want to open up another another document let's just add a few columns here so insert row above So I'm going to put in subassembly 1 through 7. So SA1. There we go. So we're on part on 37 through 43. So take those and let's get names onto those. If you want to volunteer or I'm going to put your name in there. So the one that's the the rollers I want maybe with everybody. Or do you want to fight somebody for another part? You can go into the index and change it, but is that okay? Okay. So go ahead. So that means you you start a FreeCAD file. What is the process? The file link is already there. So So start a file of that name on your desktop import the parts that are already there for that assembly so I guess the trick is okay exactly what are all the parts that go into that particular assembly that's the I guess the difficult part so we can um, actually start probably labeling the very yeah like what's happening there uh, getting very specific labels to all the parts that would do it yeah uh, that would do it so let's get Let's get those happening. And we can label them just like we had in the final product, like this. We can do this kind of labeling by number. 
Number is good because otherwise we just get so many different things in each each diagram. So number takes up the least space so we don't completely flood this. Basically what we want to do is we want to make sure we can account for every single part. And we can try to use in the numbering scheme we can try to use the same number as in the master index if possible. So, for example, what I have as 1 in subassembly 1 on the master index would really be Okay, I can't tell. I want to go to the. Let's see here. I tell from here. Spool pulley A, I believe. Is that what it is? So, which one is A and B here? that looks to me like spool pulley A. So if that's spool pulley A, that's this file right here. So what we want to link to here is the sourcing parts. So sourcing for this case is a 3D print file. Um, right. But that, would, that number on a master index is 34, for example. Yeah. So, for example, right there, I'm on 34 for that little part right here. And then the one the little washer here, what is that? So there's six allocated subassemblies. Just like what I'm doing right now on subassembly one, I'm labeling it with the parts in a master index using the number so that we don't get overwhelmed with text. So uh, do that for each respective module, a sub for each res respective subassembly. So the six ones that we've selected, please label it very carefully so you're keeping track first of all the parts that are needed. Uh, or I can, I mean, I can do that as well. I can maybe like, if you want to start by simply starting your CAD file already, feel free to do that. What I'll do to organize the whole thing since I'm gonna be probably sourcing this or helping somebody else source it I'm gonna just put in all the numbers from the master index so you can feel free to actually start the CAD files does that make sense for everybody okay so will you're saying you labeled everything for example on one yeah, okay. Good. Good, good. I will I will do the Why don't you do this, you know, start doing the your module? Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep going at it. So either you're either linking to the master index part numbers or you're just starting right on a CAD. So whichever is easiest for you to get. I would just suggest start right on a CAD. We get right into the CAD and I'll work in the background to label all the parts here. The big rings are identical because they're actually I don't know how you call it, they are identical, they're not mirror images. They're actually both identical at mirror images whereas the subassembly 2 and 3 holders they are mirror images but they are not identical parts. Mirror images right. are not identical parts in that case because of their different hole pattern. Right. 
because they're not symmetric about the vertical axis, let's say. Mm -hmm. Right, and Cura, which I use for printing, that doesn't have any manipulation like print a mirror image. So we need two files there. That's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there is no. Let's yeah, see, do I have any? Yeah, there's not another one. Mirror image. Function. Um, so which side do we already have? Looks like we have... Well, whichever side we have... Um, right. I guess we need to determine it. Does he, does he have the two different files or just one? No, uh, just the one file noted as requires two. I guess you could... I guess the, ba the little... Uh, Support doesn't need to be actually facing outward. Like uh, you could print two and face them in the same direction, I guess. But his photos of his constructions show them facing two ways. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying, but I don't think we want to. I think we want to keep it as uh, they're both facing out. Yeah, probably. But so it looks like we have the motor side file. And how do we generate, so, he doesn't provide the two different files, he just provides one? Um, I'll look again. I'm going to open up the spooler zip. Huh. In the files, it comes with 15 STLs. And in our, if you look in the part library, um, someone has moved files 14... And 15 to the deprecated assets at the bottom. And it's not those, because those are something else. one file in the original zip file for the spool holder bracket. Um, and I could copy it. It's not that much work because I, it's made in such a way that it it can just flip it around. Like the the edges, they are symmetrical, just that one big surface. If we just, if I just flip that around, then, then we have a mirrored mirrored file. Um, yeah, because the only difference is those four holes are, are in the opposite orientation on one. Yeah, exactly. Like, it should be done okay. Doesn't easily and I can... Right, in FreeCAD there's a mirror function too though, right? Do you know how to yeah, do that? Yeah, but it's a bit weird after that when you want to move stuff. But okay. I can give it a... But it shouldn't be that much work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, please do that, you, and then... You know what the pitfalls of that are. Yeah, I can I can just do it and upload it within a minute. Uh, okay, I'll make an extra entry in the part gallery. Yeah. For you to put it in. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, good, thank, thank you. you. Can you help me to find my file? I can. What do you need? Find my my file. Uh, which file? Can I can I share can I share my yeah. screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's my file. I can find it. I'm not seeing your screen. Are you sharing? Yeah. I'm not seeing your screen. Are you sharing? Yeah. Let, let me see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. 
I can't okay. see it. Okay, okay. Um, there it is. This is my no. file? No. Wait, this? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. SA6 is... Um, tensioner yeah. switch? Tensioner switch? Right. Okay, where is it? I see. I can see. Uh, it's where the link doesn't doesn't exist. Looks like it just not there. Is it a master index? Dixon, do you know where it is? Uh, sorry, I was distracted. What are you guys talking about? We're looking at slide number 10, subassembly 6. Can you identify find where that is in a part library? The printed part? Um, that is, the tall thing is STL5 loop stand. So if you search the page for loop stand, um, it's under the tension mechanism subheading, and it's in the picture. It's laying down, so it doesn't look like itself. Is that is that the part you're looking for? Also, I'm not sure there's an entry for the MDF board that's sitting on top of. Um, in the master index, that is part 29. Let me link you to the file. That file. Let me know if that solves what you were. Sorry, did we re do we resolve this? Uh, I'm not sure. It, it's that main, the, the main printed part that you're looking for. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's part 29. Yep. Yeah. Um, like it's labeled, and then I, I oh, sent there. you a link to the uh, free cat file. Okay. Is that, um, are we seeing that in the part library or is that not in there? Yeah, it's in there. It's just under the, the uh, tension mechanism subassembly. So if you, if you see, uh, you've got spool mechanism. There it that is. Has I see it. Oh, you got it? I cool. see it now. It's under, yeah. And it looks like there's a, okay, I see it. Is the wire guide that's like next to it, STL4, is that needed anywhere? Or that's deprecated at the part library? Alejandro, then you have what you need, right? Those wire guides look like 
I, I have to miss you. Took the side. Abe, say it again. Uh, yeah, I was going to say those wire guides look like they're attached to the side of the uh, part um, of the limit switch system. I th think that they're for guides for the wire pieces on the ends of the, the limit switches. Okay. Is that in the master end? Not sure. Let's see. Why? Oh yeah, okay, it's 28 there. and 29. Okay, good, good. Well, we have that. He said for some reason they were moved to the uh, incorrect, uh, or deprecated for some reason. Okay. I may have done that, actually. Okay, Abe, we've before. got an assignment for you if you're if you're available. Yeah, um, I, I missed an email um, somehow about the SSH, SSH, and I was trying to, to get that to work. Um, Almost got that, I think. Okay, assignment for you is subassembly seven within the master index. So, okay. Subassembly seven is of the electronics. So, CAD file of the electronics. And how do we arrange it physically? Um, I don't know. Do you have an idea? It starts with, uh, do we have the individual parts for that yet? I think we do, right? So, yeah, yeah. Arrange those into a CAD file, Does that, and then put the, yeah, since you know about the wire ends, put the connect, maybe start by putting connectors onto those individual parts, or maybe put that, put all the individual parts into final file, and put on the connectors. Would that make sense? Yeah, I think so. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I guess you can probably arrange them um, like on slide number 12, which shows the orientation of where the different things are. Let's see, are we using that 3D printed piece for the top of the power supply? Do we have um, set in the master index? You know, I I haven't seen that part listed. Yeah. The only reason it looks like it's there is to hold that switch. Right. I think he may have changed that. Okay. He doesn't have that file in there, right? In the. No, it's it's not there. Okay. Forget it. Then just um, go without that. Just use the power mm -hmm. supply and put in a switch. Do we have that switch included, though? Switch on and off, yeah. There's a... Well, it's a different switch. We could probably use that kind well, of switch as well. In the, yeah, in one of the pictures in the PDF, a, a diagram, the larger diagram, it shows the switch just on the side of the power supply itself instead of on top. So it it could probably be mounted almost anywhere. Yeah, no problem. Just mount it like we can glue, glue it on or whatever. Uh, crazy glue it. Or... Okay, I'm just noticing whoever did number eight, uh, they put a switches.png in a simplified CAD file link. Who did that? That should be a uh, FreeCAD file instead of a PNG. That's just one. Um, maybe if whoever did the the switch there, the off on switch number eight. If you could put the FreeCAD file as opposed to the PNG file, would be good. So it's 3.59 right now, and you guys can continue working on this, but we've got to wrap up as far as the official meeting here goes. 
Uh, so the final product where we got to today was, was pretty good just to review. We, we've gone through the entire index of the Lyman film and winder parts. So we, we pretty much generated all the files. They were in different places and some of them uh, I think only we had to generate like a, only a few but we've got the individual CAD files so we started putting together the assemblies the six different assemblies actually seven different assemblies which are in the working document subassembly one which is the spool two is the uh, spool base there three is other side of the spool base then four being this uh, tens uh, the tensioner mechanism the motor side here and then the other side with the rollers that pinch the that pinch the filament going through then the assembly six is the what are we calling that we're calling this the tensioner the the part just before was the puller this is the tensioner so that's sub-assembly, but also is actually a final assembly here in a final final scheme of things. Assembly 1 is the whole spooler part. Assembly 2, which uh, is got just the puller, the complete puller. And then assembly 3 is the tensioner. So, and then there's the electronics assembly. So final winder assembly will have the electronics in there as well. So we're combining three parts into the spooler, two parts into the pooler, puller, one part in the tensioner, and one part electronics to make the final assembly. And that's where we're at. So we're, we want to put, once we get all the spooler parts, the three of them, we need to allocate somebody to that. Then we need to allocate somebody to the pooler. And then the final assembly. Um, any takers for that that who can subscribe their names to that but we're pretty close we got quite a bit done today um, it does take a bit of time to do this anyone want to take those on to, to continue if they're going to be within their time budget for the week if not we can dole that out for uh, possibly like wrapping it up this coming week uh, would anyone have the time to actually take on the fine the the assemblies uh, I could take one okay that's great we can have you how about we get you I'm um, thinking of Puller or one of those, or, or the spooler. Yeah. Uh, and How about this? Abe on the sp spooler, Roberto on the puller. And then Alejandro, he's got the tensioner, and then Abe, you're doing um, the sub assembly sub-assembly of the electronics once we have those three then we need to just put put them together into one for final product so we'll see where we are by the meeting time and and see if we can then get the final winder assembly all together just put put all of the parts together and uh, if anyone is willing to do that, please do so. The, all the files are here. All the all the substance is here. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, any questions for as far as we are in this this meeting? Because we can go now. And I'm talking to Dixon right after this. On the video, we're we're putting together a video once. Uh, for the 3D printer workshop when it's here Dixon is going to be coming and he's going to take video so we can have a nice promotional video made out of that workshop where we interview some people and show some of the process so that's going to be a nice one um, so Dixon and Joseph are going to be participating in uh, the next build and as I mentioned we're going to try to get the 
the build for September happening in the state of Maine on the East Coast where we have Emmanuel who already said there's five people out there that want to do the workshop and if we advertise it we can fill that workshop there so that would be good anything else to cover right now any any last questions otherwise we're good we can wrap up sounds good I think we're we've got the work to do so yeah yeah we've got a lot of work to do left still a little bit